first time uh, for independence. He came up with this idea of people uh, coming out of hunger strike, which we have never even heard of. I mean, the news before, for you to personally be a hunger striker was in, in Washington, D.C., so he had come up with that. While he was doing that, then he came up with the artist from uh, artist for uh, Eric Richard. While we were doing that, then he went to painting. So that's why we're trying to catch up with him all the time. Uh, but anyway, so his uh, his idea was, you know, um, we are here, and we came from another place, so we can. There's no problem having both. Um, so we need to communicate in a way that. Here, understand, and so forth. So that's why um, he was ahead of his time, in a sense, because some of some of the people who are working with him were like, okay, why should we do our own way? Um, we're trying to get our independence. The world has betrayed us in the 40s, 50s, 60s. So we try to get our independence in our way. So why should we, we do it? Things like uh, car washing, it doesn't involve everything. But he's like, no, we need to go beyond that. We need to go to schools and stuff. So his paintings, uh, he was doing sketches. I don't know until uh, recently that when he was in, in Eritrea, he had started to play the kara, and he ended up being a musician while he was there. So I, that was used to be, I didn't know that, because we were just concentrating on the things he was doing. But later, um, and then he became, um, if you read uh, Elizabeth's book, uh, he became a, a chef, a cook, and so forth. So he had a whole lot of different ideas. Uh, at the same time. So he always concentrated on uh, color. Color is really important. He always um, talked about color, movement, um, you know, and stuff like that. So he had been all gone for a tour before. So he, has, he does a lot of uh, fish in the sea. And in the boats, Always, oh, because that's uh, it. Symbolically, it's about uh, movement, and travel, and so forth. Uh, so again, what makes him a bit different from other? There are some. His was a little bit different because he had moved to different places, to Italy, in Germany, and here. Um, and then if, every time he goes there, he tries to blend Eritrea um, and the country of the coast and the country of uh, origin at the same time. So he was blending both at the same time. So. Um, and then when he became a cook, uh, you know, I, the professor at Stanford came and said, oh, I ate uh, your country's food. I said, wow, oh, okay, good. He um, said, what did you eat? Oh, I said, I was in New Devon, uh, Yale, and I went to this restaurant. I went to this restaurant. He um, said, oh, I ate uh, shrimp a la barca. Now, I never heard of that, shrimp a la barca. But it doesn't surprise me that Fikr has come up with something like that. So, as for example, he was using Barca in Italian means boat. Barca is a place in Western Eritrea. So, you can use both. You can see his thinking is always the So, uh, and then he went to you know, Yale, studied fine arts, and so forth, and then he boat. So, uh, he did a lot of that. And then he introduced himself. Family background, his experience, and um, so Since it's where is it? Since I was advertising to Dina and Amharic, so I'm going to say whatever I have to say. I'm going to say this. Uh, and the Quran is full of quote, and the Absamani of my protocol of the Nai in a fashion, but I'm not sure. Uh, about, uh, Look how many of what was told about the people who are not going to be able to do this. I'm 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 going to be able كنا نعم بعد كم سنة 
ከነርቆ ምንድነው በዚህ ዙሩቆ ምንድነው ምዛረው አብ ሐደ ወይስ ነው አብ ሐደ ምንድነው ምናልባት በዚህ ቆነ ከመስጠት ነው እና ማይ ማይ ትሩፕናል ቆነ ስለዚህ ስለዚህ ለዚህ ምንድነው ነበር ሐሳብ ስለዚህ ነው ነው ቪዲዮ አውዴዮ ስለዚህ ነበር ፕሮግራሙ ካፕት ቪዲዮ ማአት
tigers or fish or sea uh, and so forth. Um, and then, as we know, you know, color uh, attracts the eye. Um, then he, he used to read, read a lot uh, on communication and, and so forth. So uh, when I looked at it, I don't know if he believed in it from the beginning, but most of the time our eyes land in here, right? I mean, here, go here, and here. So he tried to put the important parts over here or in the middle or bigger. So size is important, the vector is important, color is important. Uh, you know what the Germans call Gestalt, where you fill in, our imagination fills in. So if we put three dots, for example, we think, oh, that's a rectangle, that's a triangle. So these kind of images he used to put in, in that. So, um, and, uh, so I don't know if he knew how to swim or if he was a diver or something like that, but most of the images that he, because like I said, we were concentrating on, on, on the activities. Uh, but beyond that, in the discussion, we picked up some stuff that he, he was interested in. Um, so he uses images like that, and uh, uh, he uses the, uh, this one, he has the, the script. So he would put the script, the Tigrinya script or the, or the Giddes script, he would put inside the uh, paintings also. So he tried to put all the, uh, the different images, experience that he had in, 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 the, in the paintings. Um, so he, uh, if Elias is here, because Elias uh, knew him when he did the other, the first part of the paintings, he did, uh, um, I, I think he goes with, Whatever the transition is, uh, if it's a good mood, you would do a certain way. If it's, the situation is bad, then you would paint it in a different way. So he had, he had seen images like that one over there where it's like more darker, and here is more brighter. So he would use different um, emotions uh, to convey his, his uh, his mood uh, at the time uh, he's painting. Uh, ولكن ولكن <تصفيق> Now 
ማለት ነው ደሞ የተለያየ የቲዮሪ ያላት ነው ያለው ነገር ስለ ፍልስፍና ይሁን ስለ ስለ አርት የተለያየ ነገር ነው የሚያስገኘው እና አንዳንድ ጊዜ ከኛ ጋር ሲሆን ወይ ከሌሎች ጋር ሲሰሩ ሲሰራ ይሄን ይሄን እንደናርክ ሲል ሰዎች እንዴት ለምንደዚ ይሆናል ይሄን ነበር ግን እና አሁን ለምሳሌ አፍላየሩን የዚህ የትክክለኛ የሄድ ሲሰበሰበ ነበር እሱ ወራሱ ዲዛይን ያደረገውና አሁን ሳስበው ሳይው ይሆነ እንት ያለው መሳቢያ ነገር ነው ማለት ለምሳሌ ወረቀቱ ላይ እዚህ ላይ እንትሉ ምን ያለው ለት ስታርት ፊቸር ቱጌተር ሚ ፕሮግራም አርጎ ነበር እና እንደዚህ እና ሰው ተማሪዎቹ ሲሰራቸው መጀመሪያ ምን ነው ያዩና ያ ቀስቱ ላይ ነው የሚያተኩሩት እና ከዛ ያን ይገለሉ ይችላል ማለት ነው ወረቀቱ እና እንግዲህ ይሄን ይሄን ነገር ሁሉ ሳስቦ ነው እንትን ይሰጠኝ ያለው እንጂ ያን ላይ ብቻ ይሰራ እንጂ እንትላል አንድ ነገር ነበር እና ብዙ ጊዜ የመጀመሪያ አንድ እንደ እንደ ስሜቱ አንድ ጊዜ ከዚህ በፊት ተጠና ማለት ተጠና ተጠና አንድ አካባቢ ትንሽ ተቆራ ያለ እንደዛ አይነት እንትል ያለው ነገር ስለሚሰራ ከዛ በኋላ ግን ፕራይቲ ነው ነገር አላለ ደማቅ የሆነ ስለ መሳል ጀመር ነው እና ሲታዩ ለጊዜ ምንድነው ብዙ ጊዜ አሳ ይጣቀማል አሳ ወይ ነው የሱ እንደም ሰት ፖርትሬት እንደ ሜሴጅ እንደሚነገረ የሚያስተምጣል ነው አልፋ አልፋ እና አሁን 800 800 ወራይ ነው ሰሮች የሳሎ ማለት ከባች እና ሪትሪ ሉኩ አሁን ጊዜ በጣም አይደለም የራቡ ሬጎራንስ ፕሮጀክት ነው ያኛው እና አብዛኛው ጊዜ ደግሞ እንደዚህ አይደለም ወይ ደግሞ ገዝ ምን ለሆነ እዛ ትንሽ ተጽፋለ once we uh, took to the to the different schools it was about you know 5 minutes or so. i think it's about 15 minutes 15. it's so we're just going to have these um so um so what he was trying to do was to record the events that the time it happened and then he um he asked the kids you know what you feel so so uh, because he had taken all these pictures um the videos uh, we have a good understanding of that 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 school uh, don't, he's still known in the uh, places like that even the kids who were there uh, i'm trying to see if i can trace some of the kids in this film uh, but he people see it for me remember him because he was here from the image from here um and then took a lot of stuff and then he followed up with uh with the program that we had at home So he has a little bit of setting in a lot of videos that they still need to go through. Yeah, connected a lot of materials as an artist. So the, the school part uh, is very interesting because he recorded, um, it's not in this video, but he recorded um, a fourth grader uh was describing the digestive system in Tigrinya. Uh, now I teach Tigrinya at Stanford and I didn't even know half of what Tigrinya was saying because I studied the digestive system in English but where they were trying to, to learn the digestive system in Tigrinya. So he understood that and he took the, uh, he asked him so he was leading him and so forth so he was kind of a, a, a filmmaker at the same time so uh, he kind of led him uh, led the student to say a lot so That was very impressive. Um, he thought that, that was impressive, so he let me uh, do a uh, recording. So when he came back, then he became very. Uh, we followed that point of view. After people watched the five minutes, whatever that we collected, people were like, people were like trying to study under unusual circumstances or situations. Uh, so he, he let that his legs. 
trying to do there? What is it that you the first impression that you get of the book? If you look at that. Again, he uses all that fish. Bottles. Huh? It's bottles. Yeah, yeah. And that has a sort of a spiritual meaning. 
Yeah. Was it Adam? Yeah, Adam, yeah, yeah. It's trying to use Adam, yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so he uses different elements from the culture, for example, like, uh, what is that here? Yeah. Donkey? Yeah. So again, he uses a lot of, um, for example, what we're talking about sometimes, uh, he used to mention all the different uh, mythologies or folklore and, and so forth. Um, one time I remember we talked about um, uh, uh, I don't know if you've been to Africa, they say, for example, uh, when a car is passing by, right? a dog tries to bite the, the tire. And the donkey, what does it do? It just walks and then blocks the street, the road. And the goat always runs away. <laughs> so whenever a car comes, the goat runs away. Whenever a uh, donkey is there, the donkey is like proud, walks <laughs> right in front of the bus or, or so forth. <coughs> so uh, we talked about that, and it was like, oh, there was a legend. Uh, what is it all? Because three of them, a, a goat, a donkey, and a dog, got on the bus get to their respective values. So the donkey paid the right price. And we got to the village, it got off. So it was like, okay, I own, I paid, so I own the street. The dog, okay, paid for it. <laughs> so the, uh, the ticket, he didn't pay him back. So he always tried to get his, his change back. That's what he's trying to keep. Yeah. <laughs> and then the boat, got off without paying. So every time the bus or whatever comes, he's like, okay, it's charging, it's gonna charge me. But their donkey is interesting because they say that if you notice, they're always donkeys when they get together or like passing, they're like, so there's a thing in the thread that said, oh, at one point, the, dog, the donkeys got together and said, okay, we're carrying a lot, you know, and so forth. So they sing to God, saying, okay, look, man is abusing us a lot. So, so they elected one of the messenger to sit to God, to not to complain. So the donkey never came back. So every time a donkey get two donkeys on the street or whatever get together when they pass, and they're like, okay, did the messenger come back? You know, so they're always asking that. So, so we remember talking to him that he mentioned that story to me. But I don't know the different folklore. So he tried to put elements within the, the folklore and, and, and so forth. Um, so he, uh, you know, so I wouldn't, and then there are a couple of them that he uses, like I said, the hills ones. Um, so he tried to pose elements from, from, from the, you know, from the mythology or the, uh, you know, from his experience and so forth into the, into his paintings. Um, okay. Uh, yeah. كم تي كل إذا كان زارة وكلام عن سهل سهل لا ولكنها <تصفيق> لقد اردت ان اكون مسجدا لكي 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 اكون م
ማለት ስለዚህ ተፈራለየ ሁሉ ግን እንደዩ አሳሙ ይዘው ነው ስለተፈራለየ ቃል ባህሪ አጥቃይ ነው አይ ጠቅም እና ሁሉ ግን እንደው 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 ስና ከሱ ጋር ስና ያገረ አንድ ጊዜ ነው ከባህሪ መጣ አላሉ ተረቶች እንደዛ በዛ መሳሰል ነው ማለት ለምሳሌ ስለዚህ ሳውጭ አላሉ እንደዛ በዛ አሪክ ሲሆን ማለት ለምሳሌ ስለአያ ምን አይነት ስለገና ይሁን ይዘ አያ ለምሳሌ አይነት ወገላይ ሲገናኙ እንደዚህ በጆራቸው ምን ግን ካፕ ይመስላል እና ምን ነው አንድ ይሄን ምን ይባለው መልክተኛ ያደረው ሰው ትብ ያረጋል ያሽከመ በጣም ያሽከረ ነው እና አንድ ነገር አይደለም ብለን አንድ ተሰብስበው ላቁ ነው እና ከአፍሪካ ስካውን አይመጣም ወይ መጥቷል ተመጽዋው ግን ሳተፈለስ ቢያብሩ ይመጣሉ። እንደዛ ምን እንትን ስለና ባይጣም ለምሳሌ አሁን አብዛኛው ጊዜ ነው ዛ ባህር ውስጥ ያለው ነገሮች ዮስፖስ ነው ስሉ ውስጥ ያስከፋው ነው። ስለዚህ ይሄ የአዳም ይመስላል እንትን ለመጀመሪያው አጥያት ይባላል። የሱ እንትን እንደዚህ በጣም ስከያው So this is the first one I've seen that he has like four that down. Like, I know he was painting smaller ones but not really huge sizes. But he does it in, in, in different panels. Um, and then the color that he's using here is interesting because uh, for example in Eritrea there are a lot of uh, There are over 20 rock art uh, caves. Um, and also, the colors that they use, for example, in those caves, I've seen in like five, six of them. Um, and the colors still there. So they use uh, plants and so forth, uh, grind it, and we get the color, and then they still paint it. Some of it, the elements in the sun, and all that, it's fading, but still. And then there is uh, the church art is also there. And the church art uses, again, the same thing, they use colors and so forth. But also they use uh, like what they call Byzantine style paintings. So what he's trying to use here, it looks like, uh, because a lot of uh, Eritrean artists also use similar kind of colors. Uh, and again, I mean, this helps to see, because he puts a lot of elements in there. Um, So anyway, this is like a, the Byzantine art that he, he like a lot of Eritrean painters use. Maybe five, six in, in the states in terms of similar, similar. But he um, he was interested in uh, in the in the church paintings um, because he but also on the video if you saw that there were some people painting because um, the painting that uh, he saw. people were fighting, they were doing their own paintings. Uh, so this is under different circumstances and so forth. So getting the painting, uh, you know, colors and so forth was difficult. So one of the things that we, he wanted to do, for example, was from here, was to send them paintings, the right colors. Um, I remember we got some stuff from here. Um, uh, so he was trying to encourage them to do um, the art where the What they were doing was that, you know, uh, not abstract, but realist. Uh, but he was encouraging them to, to, to do abstract, which was like, because the conditions there was a little different and so forth. So they didn't, you know, some of them didn't understand, but at one point, he, so he was able to, um, to influence also, because he sent uh, with, with, the, with the materials that we sent, he also sent them. Russia and stuff like that. So, um, anyway, um, you know, Elizabeth was telling me that he started digging these big uh, panel sizes barriers. But I, I wasn't aware of the sizes that he was making. 
كمز عبيتي مسأل الزمراء أنا يفضل مرة أنا أحب السفر قل عب ميرا خلو كير خلو عبتنا مهرو خلو عب السفر زراء هم مهان لكم تمهرو تم عبو الزمراء وروس يقول يا رب جي عبزي هنا عبزي مت عبزي مستمد سه لكم تمهرو عبزي لأن نبرت مهرو عبزي 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 سجد كنو كلا لا أنا تم عبزي 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 عبز ولكنهم <تصفيق> لكن لدينا مسلمين لدينا مسلمين لدينا مسلمين لدينا مسلمين لدينا ስለዚህ <laughs> 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 بتكشتان مثالين بريد واين أصلاً إذا زي بايزن عارفين إنه سوينا فجر لمن أن يستانس نعطوا زينا فرو يا ريال يا كون نتي هنا نجري في مثال سنة بس سنة سوك السوم السوم يوم اللي كتب هني يوم ده كون زينا في مثال كازينيا زي كتب الله سبحانه وتعالى يا يسمى سب يسمى سب مو مركب مثال سوك السوم قام من هنا ولا زال عارف شو ولكن <تصفيق> 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 Questions or different questions? Um, uh, ولكنني <تصفيق> 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 <تصفي
there is rock pile. It wouldn't have come as a big size panel. So I was standing at it. Um, it's in over 20 places. Uh, so some of them is engraved, uh, chiseled up. And some of them, there are just paintings. So the paintings look you know, realist. Uh, animals, greens, and that kind of stuff. But there are other animals here. You don't even know what they are. One looks like uh, uh, an elephant, at the same time, but a giraffe. I don't know, I mean, but it, but it could be imagination, but some of it could be a real. So, um, so that's what you're asking. Mean. And what color, mostly what kind of color? Uh, originally, it could have been brighter red, but now it looks kind of uh, like burgundy red. Um, because some of it is, some of them in the cave, some of them just straight. The sun is here, yeah, it's on the side of the mountain. Is that what it's different, different. But with the church one, is a little bit different. The church one, they use different colors, which they use all these different colors uh, from the plants. Assume well. I think there are some colors around it now, like Asmara Baraha Kababi Silohona, like in date color in Lea Yal, because in Asmara, I'm not going to be a Christian or Chai Chana Kamana, like Lariwala, I'm not going to be like the Kawaka. Color room and Helen Mila in a mouth, assume that mom makes a matter of a rasum color, the Zalaman is in a way like waste, like in the mess. No. Ah, Zakabi, I'm sorry, I don't know. Him and the Muta was wine at the plant. But Hadi. Yelper Hoga, what is that? Thailand. I was Sasip. Ah, no, no, no. Thailand. Let's go to wine at the Krocha. Okay. And Nakaza was in Karocha. So color is similar now whether or not even a painting or trade or trade or anything or trade? Okay, similar. Trying to understand. Ah, ah. I'm not sure. 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 I'm not ولكن <laughs> Tarash and Tarari, we ban the Garanda Marina and the same as land like the Honeras landscape. Out, not a Lalam, yeah. Zumi said the town, but the Tanaka is sad. Giving the sun to the Maras, the Hazy Fairy, Thirty <laughs> No, it's very good. It's very good. Don't color. I love it. It's such a good idea. It's easier to master the color. That's just trying to ask me what are the different colors in the cave. In the highlands, they're more plants, so more colorful. In the lowlands, it's very dry, so they use different colors. But also the ones in the so some of them are in caves, uh, they are still preserved. But in the in, in some places where it's on the side, on the side of the mountains where it's exposure to the sun, the winds, and so forth, so you cannot tell the color. Uh, it's, it's fake. In, in the western part, you would see more similar to that kind of color, that brown there and that big power. And then the highlands more similar to this. And also the church painting is more of so, uh, that's what she was going to do. Any other questions? Mm -hmm.
things that will be very clear right now. <laughs> <laughs> What's the source of this? Yeah. I don't know, I don't know how to do because I wasn't aware of how the big panels that we did. Uh, was the, the, the small. But it could be a must it could be a, a different you know, could be a show singer and stuff like that. So in, in different patches, the same thing with that. That down. And some of them that I was talking about, it could be uh, the backyard of his house in, in, in the Eritrea. They had the, you know, that patch of his, his mother's his mother's uh, garden. So he uses, uh, yeah, that one. That's it. So he uses different, different. It's hard to see how. Uh, so I'm just going to go briefly. Uh, talk about where, um, because the environment that influenced quicker, so we, talk, we try to talk in terms of context also to understand his works and, and, and so forth. Uh, so he was born uh, in a place called Asmara. Uh, so you can see it at the bottom. And so I'll try to put it in context. Asmara um, in Tigrinya means women who united. That's the word. It means women who united. So they united with the men who were fighting among themselves and so forth. And in their honor, uh, the city was called Asma, women who united. So he was born there, in a place called Eritrea. So, and here's a map. In the Horn of Africa, it's Ethiopia to the south, uh, Sudan to the west, the Red Sea. Uh, so it's written in English and in Tigrinya, so you can see Somalia, Djibouti, the Gulf of Gulf of Aden there, in Saudi Arabia and Yemen on the other side. Um, Fa'ra's name, let's start with that. Fa'ra means love. Gabriel Jesus means Jesus, what is it? What do you think Jesus means? Jesus, right? Right. Gabriel Jesus, the deed of Jesus. So love for the deed of Jesus, money. So it's, that's what it means. So all the, the Tigrinya names, like we said, Asmara has uh, has meaning. <clears throat> so we're going. Uh, so we're going to understand it through a content co context. And I argue that Eritrea is the, well, the oldest young nation, so it might sound oxymoron, maybe it is, but we'll see how, if, if that's true. Uh, we mentioned earlier that the rock paintings and so forth that are there um, surrounding, and all the other, the old uh, church uh, materials, uh, and we'll talk about it later, had influenced people who live there. And uh, for Fugre being aware of what uh, he does, and also moves uh, to different places, so he carries that and then merges it with the, with the new place that he uh, he was. So roughly, we go. So we're trying to cover you know lots of period of time in a short period, uh, short uh, lecture time. So just roughly, we'll just go take a timeline, for example. So I'm arguing Eritrea is old and uh, it's getting younger now because we know that Eritrea got independence in 1993, so that's not a long time. But the country was always there. Uh, so how is it always there? So for example, in the, when it says missing elephant link, um, there is a, a fossil, uh, an elephant fossil that they found 27 million years old, uh, found by a farmer. And scientifically, it's named after that farmer. His name was Malaka Gabriel Christos, so it's called Malaka Gabriel Christos. So that's one old uh, material. And now, uh, I don't know if you've been following anthropology, uh, archaeology, but there's this theory called early dispersal. And that dispersal is if I should go to the, the previous one. So 
So if you look at this map, is it a pointer? No. Okay, I'll just go there and point. So this early dispersal is that uh, human beings are supposed to travel. They moved from here to Sinai and populated the rest of the world. But now, the new, the new um, this theory of dispersal, early dispersal, is that that's one part that human beings dispersed. But the other one, the faster one, uh, that is through this, places called Abdur and so forth, that there was a migration that moved to uh, the rest of the world. That's another. So now, in a place, oh, a place uh, plays a major role in that uh, dispersal. And then places like in a place called Buya, for example, uh, there's a, a, a skull that was found that's a million years old. So this tells us that there are a lot of movement that was happening at that time. And that makes it uh, an old country. So all these uh, efforts that they're finding, especially the archaeology now, um, there are over 80,000 places, uh, artifact items that are found in Eritrea that's making it second after Egypt. Um, so we'll see. So that tells us that's evidence that are is kind of old. Here are some of the rock art. Uh, over 20 of them are. This is in a place called Dara. Is uh, this one? You can see the earlier paintings uh, that we talked about earlier, or the animals that uh, we saw there. And then the other uh, interesting fact about Eritrea is that Christianity and Islam were introduced there during that time when both religions were established. So in the case of Christianity, it was 4th century AD, and in the case of Islam, it was 7th century AD. Um, so there are over uh, many monasteries in Eritrea. Uh, for example, the picture that you see in the middle, it's like a, two mountains, like a camel's hump. Now, how many of you go to church? Now, if the church was not there, would you go there? <laughs> that takes dedication, all right? <laughs> so the monasteries, are, there are a lot of monasteries there, and this is uh, one of them. Um, if you look at the one on the right, uh, that's the first mosque in, in Africa. Um, it was, uh, if you look at the history of Islam, uh, where the first refugees of Islam were called the Sahabas where the Prophet Muhammad was being um, chased out of Mecca to Medina, he sent his followers across the Red Sea. So the first who settled were in a place called Masawa in the Red Sea coast, and they established that, that mosque there. So all the mosques in the world face Mecca, except this mosque that faces Jerusalem. So it makes it a very unique um, mosque. So because of the introduction of Christianity and Islam, at its early period, uh, so you might see uh, Christianity or mosques in church within the same vicinity in Asmara, for example, on the lower part of the picture. You see uh, a mosque in the back, uh, Orthodox church in the front, and the Catholic church on the, on the other side, and the Jewish synagogue within a block. So Christian, uh, religion had never been a problem because it was introduced there. I have cousins who are Muslims. You have Christians, uh, whose generation, or Muslims now, three, four generation had Christian name. So this uh, uh, clash of civilization was never a problem in Eritrea because it was introduced there. So, and then the introduction of Christianity and Islam was also without force. It was never uh, it was through conversion. One of the things that also that makes it uh, old it is, for example, the connection with Egypt. So Eritrea had a connection with Egypt, which is uh, which was proved uh, to be uh, scientific uh, maybe five, six years ago. Uh, for example, uh, there was a pharaoh called Pharaoh Hatshepsut, 
uh, she was a, a very powerful pharaoh. And she used to send trade, trade to a place called the uh, land of Put. And you know, nobody knew where this land of Put was until uh, maybe six, seven years ago, uh, where the DNA from the, from the monkey that uh, was determined, was a, a factor that, that proved that land of Put, or God's land, what the Egyptians called God's land, was in in the highlands and the lowlands of Eritrea. So that makes it uh, very old. So we're talking about um, this being uh, old. They're coming recent. Um, so I'm going to go quickly. So this will affect Fukrais um, or people like that who went through this. Uh, period, for example, the uh, period that we're talking about now. So the Italian period was there, the Italians came and colonized it and named it Eritrea um, in 1890. So January 1st, 1890, the Italians proclaimed Eritrea to be their um, promogenita, which is the firstborn for them. Um, and they were there from 1941 to 1952, during World War II. Um, and then at that time, the Americans um, came with the uh, British established uh, different uh, Air Force bases and so forth and stayed until 1970s. And there was a federation called Federation between Ethiopia and Eritrea uh, that happened between 1952 and 1962. And in 1962, um, Ethiopia took over uh, Eritrea and the Arab struggle against uh, that started in 1961 and ended in 1991. So uh, growing up, uh, for Fukra, he would have been influenced by uh, all the religions that I mentioned, the vicinity, the neighbors, the Muslims, and whatever, and that's all uh, uh, there. The Italian influence still there, um, pasta, you know, cappuccino, latte, all of that still there. Um, and then all the other influences were still there. So now we can see that, um, so in 1993, Eritrea got its independence, so we can say that's a new nation. So let's think about that. Okay, if it was old, and now we're saying it's not being young, um, so it's not oxymoron after all. So it just means that Eritrea started old and it's getting younger as the day goes by. So that reminds me of, uh, of Scott Fitzgerald's curious case of Benjamin Button where he was born old and started getting young. So that's basically what uh, Eritrea's um, um, journey uh, looks like. So we're going to do a short... Where as an artist to understand Fukre, we have to understand him as an artist. Um, so uh, as an artist, he's trying to communicate. Uh, as a poet, he's doing the same thing. Uh, and so forth. So with the early dispersal we talked about and uh, human migration that we talked about, we're hardwired for sight. That's the most important. We're hardwired for sight. Because to survive, yes, all the movements, we have to catch it. So, right? so we're hardwired for sight. That's important. And then the five senses, the, you know, the taste, uh, you know, sight, um, and so forth, the eye, the ear, the touch the taste and the smell are a part of us. So to understand this, um, and then to really put it in a context how Fukra um, was ahead of his time, uh, communication is very, very important. So briefly, I'm going to go over this theory uh, that started in the Birmingham School of Thought in England. Um, and I'll take the, the idea of this Jamaican-British uh, philosopher and cultural um, studies uh, uh, lecturer uh, by the name of Stuart Hall. So when people communicate, uh, there, is a, there is a sender, that's what the S stands for, and then there is a receiver, that's the one who's receiving it. And then the M is the message. It okay, uh, used to be, before that, the, the theory was straight. You know, somebody sends something, and you receive it. 
And then there are different ways of communication. There's the intra, where you talk you know, to yourself. How many of you talk to yourself? Yeah, uh, should, uh, should I go to this lecture today? Maybe not. I mean, uh, so you talk to yourself. I'm waiting. So I do the same thing. And then there's the intra. You talk to someone, you get the re reply very quickly. And now with technology, then that's a little bit different, where you, know, you get the message quickly, but the effect of it, some of we don't, we don't even know. But what Stuart Hall uh, did was that he raised it to a different level. And he said, no, no, when a sender sends something, he's encoding a message. And the person who's listening is decoding it. Now, in order for the listener to, the receiver to decode it, then it has to have less noise. That's the end and stands for. The noise is like the way you brought up, the culture, uh, economic upbringing, um, the language, and all that. So if I just say something in you know, any language nobody understands, then there's no communication. It's broken. So I want you to get this part because that's where Fikra is coming from. I mean, all these things that, all these activities that we're doing, like he was like, I will come to that, uh, to that point later. But communication could get lost in many ways. Now, since we have cell phone now and you know, all that, we can record it right away and so forth. But in the 80s, that was a different story. So we might even forget that. There was no, I mean, how did we even communicate in the 1980s? Nobody even remembers that far because now, we always think that we had the cell phone in our hands for, uh, for a long, long period of time. So that's a very short period of time that we had, but to communicate and have the message across is very important. So that's why Fukara becomes, uh, he's communicating through, uh, to communicate to the American audience and so forth. Um, uh, he became very you know, important of what his message was. Well, let's look at his activity, right? So Elias is here who knew him where well, I worked with him in the East school, so he can add some more to it. Uh, but from, uh, from the point of view of what we did here and uh, what he came up with, is uh, he did a couple of like, so I tried to do a, a timeline to it. He went to a zero school, uh, which we saw there, and I'll talk about it, what it says in the field. Um, and then once he came back to the U.S., he came up with this idea, let's touch the future and talk about that. And then the hunger strike I mentioned earlier, I talked about that. And then he had uh, this idea, artists for Eritrea. So that's all what it says in the USA, USA continue. So to understand that, uh, let's go to the... Where is over there? Uh, zero school, uh, as you saw, that is uh, uh, the, the kids who were going to school, and the zero school was all over. The, this is before Eritrea's independence that we talked about earlier. Um, so they were the zero school were in different places. So where Fukre went was a place called Arar in northwest of Eritrea. Um, so in that location, um, first of all, we need to know how he how to even get there, because it's not just you take a plane and go there. Um, so you go from here to Europe, and from there to Sudan, from Sudan you have to uh, take a bus whatever, to the border of Eritrea, and, and then from there you will have to cross into, into Eritrea and, and so forth. So that time Eritrea was not independent, so it's a war zone. So he had to go there. Then he had to carry all these cameras. So it's not like a cell phone now, it's just small ticket, but he has to carry all that stuff. And also, he, that, you know, even to, to understand that, it's important to carry, what does it look like at that time to take all the, camera, the pictures that he took there? Do you, any of you even remember the VHS, the tapes? Okay, so he had to carry all of that, he had to carry bigger cameras and so forth. So just getting there is, 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 is a part, just to begin with. But to record uh, the conditions there, where the students and uh, the kids are, you saw some of them were being bombed, you doing, um, and you saw that in that, in that uh, picture. 
Um, and he asked them you know, the different things. And he also asked them about the different uh, education system because he was interested in the uh, mother tongue policy that they were doing there where, like I mentioned earlier, they were discussing about um, the digestive system in Tigrinya or, or how the car works in Tigrinya. Uh, basically, because of uh, the Italian influence, everything was in Italian, for example, how how the car works, or let's say things like carburetor would be kind of brought over there, or uh, freno, or stuff like that. All these Italian words were being replaced with uh, Tigrinian, and even the, the kids were using that. So he, he, was, he rec recorded all of that. So what he noticed was that he saw these kids, and who are going to be the future, uh, and the conditions. So, uh, very unusual you know, war zone situation, trying to normalize uh, that and to study and to, to, to do that. Um, some of the things that he was teaching them was like how to, uh, when the planes were coming to bomb the area, for example, they would ask them to freeze, so they would freeze as they make it like a game where they would uh, not. So try and imagine trying to have 30, 40, 50 kids uh, to freeze or to to ask them to stay put, to, you know, one is very difficult, much less all these kids to ask them. So uh, what he was interested, uh, so he had recorded all of that, and um, when he came back to the States, he st uh, started kind of a program, or a, a project, that's called Let's Start the Future Together, and he got the idea uh, from teacher Kristan Kanov, who was who was on the Challenger, was that the one that blew up? The teacher, and she when she was asked, she was like, I, I want to touch the I want to touch the future. So he got that idea and said, so now this is where the communication parts come in. And he said, okay, what are we used? So that's what was happening at that time. People know about it. So he said, okay. So then the let's start. So he started let's start. Let's start the future together. Idea came from that. So, when we went to different places, uh, we were able to start with that, and people understood that, right? As opposed to mentioning Eritrea as here, and you know. So this was a, a like a a segue to what we were trying to do. So, for that, the, it became very important for him to to communicate uh, to that. So what he was saying was that okay, now we can understand. We need to. Can relay Eritrea's story to the American public, but to do that, we have to understand where they're coming from. So we need to get rid of all these noise that uh, Stuart Hall was talking about. That something that disrupts you, we will not understand. The communicate would be disrupted. So to do that, we have to minimize the noise. Um, um, so I mean, so anything that, so for example, if we had a, a video of something and people eating, it could be a different kind of eating food, but we still understand that. Okay. It's food, but the culture might be different. So to do that, we need to be able to communicate in a way where it's um, understand or what the other group would understand. And after that, he came up with the idea of hunger strike, um, and then that was done in DC. Um, and then while that was going on, he started to get this program uh, or idea of artists for Eritrea, and he had Sonia Sanchez and, and people like that uh, lined up for it. Um, uh, and and as could also add to that is that one, one of the things he was doing was that he would start with with this project, and once it's like had its footing, he was like going to the next one while well, everybody's doing that. He will start a third one so you can see that arrow and try to put it there. He's like trying while we're still doing let's start the future. He was in the hunger strike already. When the hunger strike was going, he's already artist for Eric, so he's way ahead of his time. Um, so before for this. Presentation. I was looking through some of the photos, and I found some of the activities that we did in San Jose. And uh, this is, for example, about what we did in, in San Jose at that time. Um, so we went to a place called uh, San Miti High School, Archbishop, Archbishop uh, Miti High School. Uh, that was the principal there. Uh, we so we went to the school, and ahead of time, we, we told them, we showed them a five-minute video, and so forth, and they gave us so many stuff that we had to go back and forth in two or three, four different cars just to pick up all the materials. So it was a huge success. And we did that and so you know, you know and then we invited uh, some of the students who were 
influential in organizing before we came. Uh, we did a lecture at the community center and we, we, we the principle of the flying a symbol of wisdom at that time. So I had forgotten a lot totally about this picture, you know, those pictures, and when I was looking for them, I found one. But the interesting part that I found was that the one in the middle. Um, so one of the students I'd given uh, her name is Elsie, Elsie Freitas, and she says, whoever this may concern, my name is Elsie Frida. This gift was given to you from me. In return, could you please write me a letter? I'd love to know more about your school, your, about you and your school. And she left an address. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to follow this and see who received this, and we can follow up that. So that was interesting. So we, the students, really wanted to connect, and they were really touched by it. So this is one of the events, the effects of what, what, what we did here and what I'm trying to do over there in the East Coast. <clears throat> so remember we were talking about how, you know, we are hardwired for the five senses. And uh, looking back, I think uh, Frederick covered all five of them. Because as, as an artist, he, he had, you know, all the ones that we saw, uh, he put all the color, the vector, um, movement, and, and so forth, proportion, and composition, all, all of that, in the colors. Um, and as a poet, uh, a musician, he, you know, he covered the other sense, the ears, touch, taste, and smell, yeah, as an entrepreneur and a cook, he covered all those five senses. So he um, was a person ahead of his time. Um, yeah, it was true that he came from uh, Eritrea, but at the same time, he was in Italy. When he was in Italy, he tried to blend, so he, he was trying to fuse uh, the different cultures. So culture is not static, but dynamic, he understood that. So he was trying to um, Put all the experiences and, and so forth in, in, in the things that he did. So he was a, a person way ahead of his time. So um, I don't want to make it any longer than this. <laughs> okay. So um, thank you so much. So if you have any questions, I'll leave that. Uh, to Elizabeth. Mm -hmm. yeah. right. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions? Or I know there are some of you in the audience who you mentioned know some yeah, more yeah, things. Yeah, if you want to add any stories or any responses to what you've heard or seen in the gallery today. Yeah, he, Elias was with him in the East Coast. Uh, we were in the West Coast. So he um, they, uh, worked closely uh, with uh, some of them. So, for example, the artists uh, for Eritrea, I knew it started, but I don't know if it could have a lot to do with it. So, you can talk about that one. Mm -hmm. Do you want to come up and say a few words? It would be lovely. I'm kind of shy. <laughs> <laughs> it put me it's, on all, the spot. it's all family. <laughs> well, thank you, Isaz, for the wonderful presentation. and. Uh, this gives me a chance to pay tribute to my dear friend Fevre, uh, whom I really miss very much. Uh, our paths crossed uh, in New York in the mid-80s, where I came there you know, to work as a full-time activist for the Eritrean political cause, you know, the EPLF, the Liberation Struggle, and Fevre was one of his uh, many, many talents. He was also a political activist at that time. Uh, about my age, maybe a year younger than me, I'm now uh, 57, so I would have been 56, am I right? Um, he struck me from the very first time I met him as a, a person in a hurry, very energetic, huh? driven but uh, with vision, uh, 
talented uh, cosmopolitan, he could speak Italian, he had come to the US by way of Germany, uh, you know, all the influences that Isaias mentioned, uh, him growing up in Eritrea, absorbing all these, uh, you know, sights, smells and sounds of, uh, you know, uh, from the get-go, he, he would always come up with creative ideas. How do we communicate? How do we tell our stories to the larger American public? Uh, you know, influential thinkers like Noam Chomsky, for example. Uh, he was very daring and never shy. <laughs> I was uh, more, you know, shy, quiet in the background. He, on the other hand, was a public diplomat, uh, connected with people, uh, art, you know, he could uh, you know, talk about books, about paintings, uh, poetry. So when he went to liberated Eritrea, for example, the, the, the video that you saw earlier, uh, he came up, uh, absorbed, you know, the, the need to help these kids who were in the very difficult circumstances, uh, getting an education in a war condition. So, uh, as Isaias mentioned, he came up with this project, Let's Touch the Future Together. And the idea, he somehow, uh, I think, uh, when the Challenger accident happened, he read in the New York Times about that teacher, Macaulay, where she, she, when she was asking why she wanted to go to space, he said, you know, I want to touch the future. And so there was a long article in the New York Times. So he quickly, you know, zeroed in on that and said, ah, that's a very catchy, catchy title for our project, uh, for fundraising for education material. So he came up with this Let's Touch in the Future Together concept, which was very successful all over the United States. Uh, you know, young Eritreans would go to high schools, elementary schools, explain about Eritrea and the need for material support, pens, pencils, uh, exercise books, books, whatever, the students. And that resonated with, with a lot of students and teachers, and we were able to gather, you know, containers of uh, educational material and ship them to Eritrea. So that was for like, while that was going, he came up with another uh, concept, you know, uh, to shorten it, I, I tend to be long-winded, but the hunger strike <laughs> thing, for example, uh, Isaias did not uh, mention, that was uh, a time when the war was heightened and there was an aerial bombardment that caused a lot of civilian death in Eritrea, you know. How many of you remember Nightline? The older people would, <laughs> would know what, what I'm talking about, right? Nightline, Ted Koppel on ABC. So they wrote the bombardment, the bombardment of the port of Masawa in Eritrea. The deaths of kids, civilians, uh, very horrific uh, graphic pictures, which shocked the American public. And so, uh, because the Ethiopian military junta at that time was getting help from the Soviet Union, which had not collapsed yet. <laughs> so Fedora came up with the idea, we have to go to the, in front of the Soviet embassy in Washington, D.C., and do a hunger strike. So we wake, you know, the conscience of, of people. So he managed to gather about uh, 10 uh, young Eritreans to go there and do a hunger strike in front of the Soviet embassy and prominent uh, intellectuals like Julian Bond, the late Julian Bond, came there to express solidarity, media coverage and all that. But that was fair. Well, that, before that wound down, he was also thinking about the other project, Artists for Eritrea. You could see, Fiora could see that the war was coming to an end, but after the war comes, reconstruction is coming, right? The country is devastated by war. It, it will need to rebuild. So Fulare comes up with the idea, we have to do something, you know, to, to get help, uh, to get help, to get this, the, the young country going. He comes up with artists for Eritrea and he approaches, uh, you know, poets like Sonia Sanchez, Amiri Baraka, Richie Heavens, and, you know, they embrace this idea and so, you know, that was another project. So, that was, 
uh, my memory of father, he was so all over the place, you know, so many projects going, was visionary. And, uh, you know, I didn't see him after 2001. That was the last time I saw him, I think, in New York when he had opened the restaurant and he had become a chef. By that time, he had met uh, his wife, Professor Alexander, I think. Uh, but I had lost touch, and, and much later, of course, I heard of his passing away while I was in Eritrea. I was so sad to, to lose such a talented, uh, you know, and, and driven uh, friend, artist, and uh, all round guy, cosmopolitan, his views, uh, progressive, uh, poet, chef artist and all that. That's, uh, that's my, <laughs> my contribution. Thank you for listening to me.